Hello friends, I am Dr. Maninda Singh from Department of Computer Science, Punjabi University Patiala. Today we are going to continue with the topic of ciphers. Let us recapitulate a bit what we had done in the previous lecture. Now what is a cipher? Cipher is an exact mathematical process used in encrypting and decrypting a message or in other words, a cipher is a way to make a word or message secret by changing or rearranging the letters in the message. There are two ways of encrypting a message, either through substitution or through transposition. Some of the common substitution ciphers are shift cipher, affine cipher, Playfair cipher, Hill cipher, polyalphabetic ciphers which include Wigner cipher and one time pad or Vernon cipher. And the last one is book cipher. In the previous lecture, we had done the introduction about cipher and also covered three types of ciphers that is shift cipher, affine cipher and Playfair cipher. Today, we are going to talk about Hill cipher, Wigner cipher, Wernham cipher and book cipher. Let us start with the Hill cipher first. The Hill cipher was invented in 1929 by Lester Hill is a type of polygraphic substitution cipher which means it works on a multiple letters at the same time. The Hill cipher belongs to the family of matrix theory of mathematics. In particular, we must know how to calculate the inverse of a matrix. Now let us look at the working of Hill cipher. First of all, let us see how encryption is performed using Hill cipher. In Hill cipher, the first step is to translate each letter of plain text message to numbers. For example, A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1 and so on and finally Z is equal to 25. Then based on this translation, all the letters in the plain text message are arranged as a matrix of numbers. For example, if our plain text is CAT, so based on step 1, we know that numerical value of C is 2, A is 0 and T is 19. Hence, our plain text matrix contains a single column and three rows with elements 2, 0 and 19. The plain text matrix is then multiplied with the matrix of randomly chosen keys. The key matrix has a size of n into n where n is the size of rows in the plain text matrix. In our present example, we are taking a key matrix of size 3 into 3 because there are 3 rows in our plain text matrix. The first row of the matrix contains 6, 24 and 1. The second and third row contains 13, 16, 10 and 20, 17 and 15 respectively. Now multiply these two matrices that is the plain text matrix and the key matrix. And after multiplication we get 31, 216 and 325 which is also in the form of matrix. Next step is to compute a mod 26 value of this result matrix. Here we get the remainder after dividing the result matrix values by 26 and after computing the mod 26 of the result matrix we get 5, 8 and 13. Now we translate the numbers that we get after computing the mod 26 to alphabets that is numeric 5 is alphabet F numeric 8 is alphabet I and numeric 13 is alphabet N. Hence, our cipher text is FIN for the plain text CAT. Next is how to perform decryption using Hill cipher. The first step in the decryption process is to find the inverse of our original key matrix. Therefore, inverse of the key matrix contains 8, 5 and 10 in the first row whereas second and third row consists of 21, 8, 21 and 21, 12 and 8 respectively. Then we multiply the ciphertext matrix with the inverse of our original key matrix and after multiplication we get 210, 442 and 305 as outcome in the matrix form. Next step is to calculate the modulo 26 of this matrix and the result of modulo 26 is 2, 0 and 19. Therefore, our plain text matrix contains 2, 0 and 19. Now further translate these numbers to alphabets. So 2 becomes A, 0 becomes A and 19 becomes T. As you can see, we have generated the plain text successfully which is CAT. The next cipher is Wigner cipher. The Wigner cipher was developed in the 16th century 
by mathematician Blaise de Wigner. The Wigner cipher was adapted as a modified form of standard scissor cipher in order to reduce the effectiveness of performing frequency analysis on the ciphertext. The cipher achieves this by using a text string as a key, which is then re reused for carrying out a number of alphabet shifts on the plain text. Similar to the Caesar cipher, but instead of doing a single alphabet shift throughout the entire plain text, the Wigner cipher uses a key to find out several different shift amounts across the entire message. The Wigner cipher is also called a polyalphabetic substitution cipher, which means multiple alphabetic mappings are used, thereby hiding the corresponding frequencies of various characters in the original plain text. Therefore, as compared to monoalphabetic ciphers, for example, Caesar and simple substitution ciphers, the Wigner cipher is immune to simple frequency analysis. Effectively, the Wigner cipher converts the plain text character to cipher text characters on a per character basis. It is based on the table called Wigner table. There are 25 rows and 25 columns in the Wigner table. Each row of the table is in fact a scissor cipher shifted by a number as per its row position. A row A is shifted by 0, row B is shifted by 1, row C is shifted by 2, and so on. To encrypt a plain text, the Wigner cipher connects this table with a keyword. For example, if we want to encrypt the plain text, God is on our side, long live the king with the key or keyword propaganda. In Wigner cipher, we start the encryption process by repeating the key as many times as necessary in order to cover the entire length of the plain text and writing it below the plain text so that no alphabet of the plain text is left uncovered. Therefore, our plain text is God is on our side, long live the king. And the keyword used for encryption is propaganda. As you can see, the keyword has only 10 characters and plain text contains 29 characters. Therefore, to cover all the characters of plain text, we have to repeat the keyword. The ciphertext is produced by using the Wigner table, which we had just discussed. Let's see how to use this table for encryption process. The plain text characters indicate the column and keyword characters indicate the rows of the table. The intersection point of row and column alphabets gives us the ciphertext alphabet. For example, let's take the first plain text alphabet of our example, which is G, and keyword alphabet is P. And you can see in Wigner table, the column character P and row character G intersect with each other at P. So this is going to be our first ciphertext character. The next plain text character O is intersected with the keyword character R at character F. The next plain text character is D, and it is intersected with the keyword character O at character R. And the same intersection procedure repeats for all the other characters of plain text, and we get VFR, XS, UN, BXR, HZRT, LUNT, OIKV as the output for our plain text. God is on our side, long live the king. This is how we can read this table in order to convert the plain text to ciphertext in Wigner cipher. The decryption of the ciphertext using Wigner cipher follows the same procedure. In this case, first we have to write the characters of the keyword and then write the ciphertext below the keyword characters. And rest of the process is same as that of encryption. Let's see how encryption process in the Wigner cipher is represented mathematically. The encryption of the message M at letter I is equal to the alphabetic value of I in the plain text plus the, the alphabetic value of corresponding I in the key. The decryption is the same process but reversed, subtracting the key instead of adding in order to arrive back at the original plain text value. The Wigner cipher was an improvement upon previous historical encryption techniques but is still vulnerable to brute force attacks and frequency analysis, though to lesser degree than the Caesar cipher. Next, we are going to discuss the Wernham cipher or one-time pad. Wernham cipher was developed by Gilbert Wernham in 1918, and this cipher is also called a one-time pad or OTP. A one-time pad is a very simple symmetric cipher. 
It is one of the most secure and reliable cryptographic algorithm. In Vernum cipher, the key is a set of random numbers produced by pseudo random number generator. That means key is chosen randomly and every time a new key is issued for encryption. Therefore, this generator is only used once to encrypt a message and for the same message, next time different ciphertext is generated. That is why it is very difficult to break this cipher. For decryption, one time paired and key is used. As same key is used in the decryption process, so secure transmission of key is a big issue in the Vernum cipher. Let's discuss some of the properties of one time paired or Vernum cipher. The first property is that the number of possible keys is equal to the number of possible plain texts. Second property is the key is selected at random. Third property is that key should be used only once. Now let's discuss the encryption process used in case of Vernum cipher. The first step is to treat each plain text letter as a number in increasing sequence. That is A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1 and so on and finally Z is equal to 25. Next. Add each number corresponding to the plain text letter to the corresponding input one time pad alphabet number. If this number is greater than 26, then subtract 26 from it. That is performing mod 26. Now finally, translate each number of the sum back to the corresponding alphabet. So this gives us the output ciphertext. Repeat the same for each character of the input plain text. Let's apply the Vernum cipher to a plain text message how are you? Using a one time pad or key as NCB TZQARX. Now, how to start this process? First of all, we write numerical values for each alphabets of plain text and OTP. As you can see here, the numerical value of plain text H is 7, 0 is 14, W is 22, A is 0, R is 17, E is 4, Y is 24, and finally U is 20. Similarly, the numerical value for OTPN is 13, C is 2, and so on. And the last alphabet of OTP is X, and its value is 23. Now we are going to add the first alphabet of plain text with the first alphabet of OTP, that is, add H within the value of H is 7 and value of N is 13, and we get 20 as the result of addition. Then repeat the same procedure on all the other alphabets of the plain text and corresponding OTP. Next, we have to find the mod 26 of addition. As you can see here, 20 is less than 26, so the outcome of mod 26 is 20. Next, we are going to translate the outcome of mod 26 operation into alphabet. As the outcome here is 20, so the alphabet corresponding to the numerical value 20 is U. Repeat the step 3, 4, and 5 for all the other alphabets of plain text. And finally, we get a ciphertext message UQXTRUYFR for the plain text, how are you? Now we are going to perform the decryption procedure using the Vernum cipher. Ciphertext is UQXTRUYFR and OTP is NCBTZQARX. To begin with, we are going to write the numerical values for each alphabet of ciphertext and OTP key. Next, each OTP letter is subtracted from ciphertext alphabet. If the subtraction produces a negative result, then add 26 to the result. So after performing the mod 26, translate each number of the subtraction back to the corresponding alphabet. This gives us the original plain text. Now coming back to the example, the first letter of ciphertext is U and the first letter of OTP is N. Next, subtract N from U. The number assigned to N is 13 and to U is 20. So 20 minus 13 is 7, then we will calculate the mod 26 of 7 and mod 26 of 7 is 7. Now translate this 7 to alphabet and we would get H as the outcome. So repeat these steps for all the other ciphertext letters and we would get how are you back, which is the original plain text. Let's see how encryption and decryption operations in the Vernum cipher are expressed mathematically. CI is equal to PI, X or KI is the mathematical expression for encryption, whereas P 
P subscript I is the ith alphabet of plain text and K subscript I is the ith alphabet of OTP key and P i is equal to C i x or K i is the mathematical expression for decryption. Next cipher is book cipher. Cryptographers worked very hard to devise different methods of encrypting messages and crypt analysts were equally determined to disclose their content. In 1526, cryptographers started thinking about how to use a printed book in order to hide a message. Jacob Silvestri, one of the forefathers of cryptography, was the first person to explain a true book cipher. He suggested the use of a code book as a method of hiding information and invented a sort of dictionary with root words placed in many columns. Each row and column in the book is assigned a special symbol and additional symbols were allotted to commas, grammatical inflections and question marks. The Voynich manuscript have been encrypted by using this technique. By 1586, Blaise de Wigner had already suggested various methods to use a book for encryption purposes. His first recommendation was to put a transparent sheet over the pages of a book and underline those words which the cryptographer wishes to include in the message. The receiver would then place this transparent sheet onto their own copy of the book and match the lines of the words on the page in order to reduce the message. This was a rather very basic and not practical method of hiding messages. Since locating the desired words in the order they are present in the original message on a page is very unlikely. His next recommendation was to use a triple coordinate system to match letters in a text. This means that the first number of the coordinate referred to a page number in the book, whereas second and third number of the coordinate system refer to a line and to the location of the letter in that line respectively. For example, if you want to encrypt the letter C using SYNCS, the code book, then you may go to the first page, second line and fourth letter of that line encrypted as one, two, four. That way, any combination of letters or words could be manufactured using a relatively small text. In the 18th century, this method of encrypting messages by suggesting the use of numbers for the page and line in which the particular alphabet occurs first was modified by Christian Brethaupt. This means that the key is limited only to the first few pages of a book as opposed to the book as a whole. He opposed the opinion that this method fails to provide as much security as cryptographers would like since a clever investigator might find out what key book was used. Later, Philip Thickness writes a similar method in which a numeric code is used to refer to a word in a book by page, line and word number. Later on, several modified versions of book ciphers were produced of this. The numbering scheme was adopted for encrypting individual letters and this made the entire encrypting more practical and precise. Then we come across a book cipher proposed by Thomas Jefferson Biel in which he gave the exact location, content and owners of a substantial treasure. Book ciphers continue to grow over the period of time and ultimately led to the formation of what is known as the only unbreakable cipher. So friends, this was all about the ciphers. Hope all the concepts are clear to you. Hope to see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.